This is the official emblem of the New Orleans Police Department. You are about to witness a true story of a crime from the official files of the NOPD. The names of all persons actually involved have been changed. who heard the shots has called the police. The ambulance drives away from the scene with the critically wounded patrolman, Thomas Higgins. Detectives Bojack and Conroy, ordered to investigate the shooting, are questioning the patrol officer who was first on the scene. Who reported the shooting, Randy? A woman across the street. But she didn't see anything on anybody. Just heard the shots, that's all. Mm -hmm. You talked to her? No, Davis, my partner. He's checking out the neighborhood now. What about the owner of the store? He ought to be here by now. Own him. Just lives three blocks away. What's his name? Joe Caprini. I've seen him time or two before. Mm -hmm. Lab crew, they been here yet? They finished dusting and left just as you pulled up. Huh? I don't know what else they got, but they got a good set of prints off that cigar case line. Huh? Huh? Seems as though that's all they were after. Cigars all over the floor. Nothing else seems disturbed. They must have taken some cigars and dropped this and getting away. Where'd you find that? Out on the sidewalk, close to where Higgins' body was. The live crew didn't want Already gone when I found him. Oh. Tango. Tango's in there. Doesn't make sense, General. Man doesn't break into a store and then shoot a cop just to steal some cigars. Maybe they were after something else in there. Maybe this Caprini hides his money in a cigar box. You know, some storekeepers have a habit of hiding their money on a premises. Yeah. Well, if he does and it's missing, that narrows it down to whoever knew he had it hidden here. And they dropped a the cigar while getting away. That's not much of a lead. It's still just a cigar. Excuse me. I'm Joe Caprini. This is my place. Uh, they called me to come down here. What took you so long? Well, my wife was very much upset when I told her what happened down here, and I tried to make her feel better before I left her to come in. Well, Mr. Caprini, you better come back here and look around and see if anything's missing. Tell me, Mr. Caprini. Do you keep any money hidden on the premises? My money is gone. How much? I hired a cigar box, $410. 
Why do you leave so much here? Well, I uh, don't like to take it home with me when I close up at night. This is not a very good neighborhood, and I always take it to the bank the next day. $410, huh? Isn't that a lot of money to take into a place like this in one day? Well, it's been three days since I've been to the bank. My wife's been sick. She couldn't come down and watch the store so I could go to the bank. Who knew you kept your money here? Well, I... Uh... Look, Mr. Caprini, it's got to be someone you know, someone who lives in the neighborhood. Someone who's around an awful lot, maybe buys his smokes from you. Some cigar-smoking, gun-packing punk kid. Who could it be? Come on, you know all the characters in this neighborhood. Who are the troublemakers? The smart, bright boys that always seem to have a few bucks and never work. Who? I don't like to suspect anybody I know. You don't want to what? Mr. Caprini, a policeman's just been shot. You've lost a great deal of money and you don't want to suspect anybody? Well... I, uh... I, uh... Mr. Caprini! I want you to understand something. We do. We want to suspect everybody. And we're gonna keep right on suspecting them till we find the right one. Now, you go on home and have a nice sleep. Try not to dream about three little kids that may lose their father because he was shot trying to protect your store. Here, citizen. Have a cigar. Now, wait a minute. This is the cigar you found on Higgins' body, isn't it? A cop shooter helped himself to these, Caprini. He dropped one getting away. Who do you know that smokes tango cigars? I, um, I don't handle those. What do you mean you don't? What are you afraid of, Caprini? Who are you afraid of that smokes tango cigars? Afraid of anybody? I just don't sell them. No? There's none in the cabinet. You got any more stock anywhere else? It's all here. All right, Caprini, go on home to your wife. We'll get another policeman to watch the store so you can sleep real good the rest of the night. I, um, uh, I'm sorry about the policeman's kids. somebody or something. That's for sure. Ballistics ought to have something pretty soon on those slugs they took out of Higgins' body. Maybe be advised come up with something on them prints they took off the cigar case. Yeah. We're going back to headquarters right now. We'll check on it then. You better call the district and have them send somebody over here to relieve you. John? If those slugs of those prints don't lead us to somebody, we're going to shake up this entire neighborhood. Anyone that even looks suspicious, we're going to run them in. Back at headquarters, detectives Bojack and Conroy are waiting for reports from ballistics and B of I, who are still running a check on the slugs taken from Patrolman Higgins and the fingerprints found on the door of the cigar cabinet. And you've checked everyone? Oh, okay, Doc. I have nothing, huh? Okay, thanks a lot. Well, Doc. Look, you tell him when he comes through that all the boys down here miss him, will you? Yeah. Yeah, Doc, I'll check back with you. Thanks very much. Doctor says it's still 50-50 with Higgins. Uh, that was Rainey calling in from the store. His partner just finished checking with everybody in the neighborhood. And? Nothing. You know, I can't stand to sit around here while I know the guy that gunned Higgins down is running around loose. Homicide, Conroy. Be a by now, Vic. What do you got, Harry? And those slugs in the whole file that match up? Yeah. Who's the guy? Thanks a lot, Harry. The guy we want is Benny Fresno. There's a mug on him on the way down now. Benny Fresno? Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell with me either. He's been up twice on narcotics. He's a junk himself. Well, maybe Carl Narcotics has got a line on him, huh? Yeah. It's a Morgan Bank president, but thanks, Frank. John, I'll call Carl Narcotics, will you? See if he can give us a line on where that junkie lives.
in yourself. The place is surrounded by place. Somebody wanted him as bad as we did. Yeah. When you look around the room, John. Phone on the hall, I'll call for him. cigars. And shipping it into the country, right through legitimate channels. Why a new gimmick too, John? What's your point? Nick Laverno. Didn't they say he just slipped back into the country? Yeah. Could be something he thought up and brought in with him. Could be. Yeah. When the coroner and the boys get here, we've got a date. Caprini? Yeah. We've got enough now to make him talk. We've got a nurse to stay with his wife. We're going to take him back down to headquarters with us. We've got plenty to make him talk now. He knew where to go and get it. No, please. I... You aren't looking in that cigar case tonight for money because you don't keep it there. You were looking for a box of Tango cigars. And when you found they were gone, you were relieved and pulled that stolen money gag. And you had a pretty good idea who had stolen a load of cigars because he probably asked you for a Tango in credit today. 
So when you left us at the store tonight, you went to Fresno's room. You found him with the stolen cigars. You had to do something to keep him from spilling his guts when we caught up with him. No, I didn't kill him. We didn't say he was dead. I didn't kill him. But you know who did? Because when you left the store tonight, you called whoever runs the loaded cigar racket here and told him what had happened, didn't you? And you fingered Benny Fresno for the job. And the boss killed him, or had him killed. Who's the boss, Caprini? You're just a little cog in a big machine, Caprini. After tonight, you're no good to them anymore. First chance they get, they'll retire you with a knife in your back. Who's the boss, Caprini? If you tell us who he is, you'll stand to get only a narcotics rep. But if you don't, we could book you as an accessory in the murder of Benny Fesno. Who's the boss, Caprini? Nick Lavarno. Yeah, John. He says Nick Lavarno. I didn't say that. You said it. You said everything. I didn't say nothing. Don't be afraid, Caprini. We'll protect you. Just tell us. It's, it's, it's not for me. It's for my sister. My sister back in Italy. It, it, it's like you say. It's, it's a big machine. They make me handle these cigars. They, they tell me what to do and not to talk or they'll murder my sister back in Italy. It's not for me. For me, I don't care, don't you see? It's, it's for my sister that I'll talk. I don't tell you nothing. Don't you see? Yeah, Caprini. We see. But we're going to have to book you on a narcotics rap anyway. You'll be safer that way. We'll spread the word that you didn't talk. Let's take him upstairs and book him, Jono. Then we'll get down to the customs office. They'll have a manifest showing who those cigars were shipped to here. Yeah. Come on, Caprini. Vinny? Yeah. Well, then you take him upstairs and book him. I'll call Carl over in narcotics and have him plant the word about Caprini not talking. Or it might do us some good. All right. Meet me at the car, Jono. Yeah. about Caprini. What about it? A pigeon I know that hangs around headquarters called me here at the house just now and said they brought Caprini in and booked it. What? He says they sweated him out and he wouldn't talk, but they know about the cigars anyway. You told me you got all of this Fresno store. Yeah, I know, I know, but the pigeon says Fresno dropped one getting away. And the cops got it broken open and well, they'll be hot on us by now. Get over to the warehouse fast. I'll meet you there. Right. Chance, Lavarno. Throw your 
guns on it. Come on out. You got a chance for a lawyer. If you don't, you're gonna get an undertaker. You scare me real big, copper. Can't you feel the floor shaking? Let's make a break for the dock and take to the river. How long can we stay underwater, stupid? You haven't got a chance, Laverno. We know the whole story, Laverno. And Caprini didn't give it to us either. The import manifest out of the customs told us where to find Tango cigars. And we knew you'd sneak back into the country. But we figured we'd find you where the cigars were. He's doing an awful lot of yak, and he must be up to something. Let's start circling around. Fall in, Laverno! If we can't get in behind him, we'll make a break for the dock and run over the other warehouse and lose him. Come on. Cigars, Laverno. I'll have a blow up right in your face. In just a moment, the disposition of tonight's case. Nick Lavarno and his confederate, Frank Crandall, were tried for the killing of Benny Fresno and are now serving life terms in the state penitentiary. Giovanni Caprini is serving a term on a narcotics charge. Patrolman Thomas Higgins recovered from his wounds and returned to duty. Next week, another true story of a crime from the official files of the New Orleans Police Department, the NOPD. NOPD is gratefully dedicated to the men who proudly wear the Star and Crescent badge of the New Orleans Police Department and to their fellow police officers throughout the country who risk death 24 hours around the clock to enforce your laws and to protect your property and your life.